mid-sized family estates are as entertaining to drive as the Ford Focus Estate. Launched alongside its third-generation hatchback sister in 2011, the capacious wagon is pitched directly against the likes of the Vauxhall Astra Sports Tourer and Volkswagen Golf Estate, together with its seat Leon ST and Skoda Octavia Estate cousins. Plus there are Emmy rivals in the forms of the Hyundai i30 Tourer, Kia Seed Sportswagon, Renault Megane Sport Tourer and Peugeot 308 SW to name but a handful. Major midlife refresh in 2014 three and a half years after its arrival, a major reworking of the Focus Estate was introduced. While it shared its more elegant nose, all the bodywork forward of the windscreen was new. With the hatchback, the rear end was largely left untouched, save for a tweaked bumper. Inside the changes were more obvious, with an uplift in quality of the plastics used, as well as a larger 8.0-inch screen for the Sync 2 multimedia package. The instruments and switch gear were also upgraded, making the Focus feel a little bit more special, albeit still lagging behind its VW rival. No changes were made to the 476-litre boot capacity, it's certainly more spacious and flexible than the Focus hatch, but the rear seats still don't lie completely flat when folded. Broad lineup of petrols and diesels unlike the hatchback, there's no electric Focus Estate or a pumped-up RS model, but there are abrasive sporty SDs among the selection of mainstream petrol and diesel choices. Turbocharged petrols, or EcoBoost in Ford's peak, come in 1.0. 1.5 and 2.0 litre capacities producing between 100 horsepower and 250 horsepower depending upon the model you choose. That higher power output belongs to the ST models where the estate will reach 154 miles per hour, clocking a 0 to 62 miles per hour time of 6.5 seconds along the way. Diesels are significantly more popular due to their efficiency. 1.5 and 2.0 litre TDCs are available with between 95 horsepower and 185 horsepower. Opt for the 105 horsepower econetic version of the 1.5 litre for claimed economy figures of 83.1 miles per gallon and CO2 emissions of 88 grams slash km, matching its hatchback equivalent. Generously equipped trim hierarchy there's a hierarchy of 7 trim levels in the Focus Estate lineup ranging from the entry-level style model that does include aircon but not alloy wheels, through to the sporty ST2 and ST3. Ford encompasses a large degree of relevant, everyday technology that makes the Focus safer and easier to use, with many of them standard. The blind spot monitors indicator works effectively while the self-parking function and autonomous emergency braking are some of the easiest to use. Ford Focus Estate Model History January 2011 a state version of the third generation focus on sale with first deliveries expected in May. Petrol engines consist of the 1.6 litre TVCT and 85 horsepower and 125 horsepower, with a turbocharged 1.6 litre EcoBoost producing 150 horsepower. Four diesels are expected to be more popular, 1.6 litre DC with 95 horsepower and 115 horsepower and the 2.0 litre DC in 140 horsepower and 163 horsepower forms. Trim hierarchy mirrors the hatchback's edge, Zadek, titanium and titanium mix structure. February 2012, turbocharged, 3-cylinder 1.0 litre EcoBoost engines introduced in 100 horsepower and 125 horsepower geysers, available across the trim level hierarchy except on entry level studio models. Sporty Zaytek Estrum introduced with the estate body following the hatchback's arrival late in 2011. June 2012, performance-oriented ST1, ST2, ST3 models available to order for September delivery, all powered by a 2.0-litre 250 horsepower EcoBoost engine. July 2013, power for petrol and giant ST models increased to 275 horsepower thanks to an aftermarket mountain kit. August 2013, revised range structure with new models fitted with SatNav, Zaytek Navigator cells alongside the regular Zaytek, while the former Titanium and Titanium X trims are replaced by Navigator versions. September 2014, facelifted range available to order with deliveries from November. Tweaked engine range, joined by a 182 horsepower 1.5 litre petrol, is more efficient than before, with a mix of petrols and diesels paired with style. Zaytek, Zaytek S, Titanium and Titanium X specifications. Estates feature the hatchback's new interior and nose design, but changes to the rear are much more modest. 
October 2014, Sport Your ST1, ST2 and ST3 models reintroduced with a more aggressive look based upon the facelifted range, with deliveries from February 2015. Two 2.0-litre power plants are available, a 250-horsepower petrol and a 185-horsepower diesel. October 2015, aftermarket mount tuned performance upgrade available for the petrol engine ST models, now producing 275 horsepower. November 2015, PowerShift twin clutch automatic gearbox is available to order in conjunction with diesel engine ST derivatives. June 2016, previous Zatec S trim level replaced by equally sporty looking ST line specification. February 2017, Zaytec Edition replaces previous Zaytec grade, while ST1 trim is dropped. Multimedia package upgraded to Sync 3. Read the full Ford Focus Estate review to find out whether it combines entertaining handling in a practical package. Petrol and diesel options only for the Estate turbocharging for the majority of engines ST models deliver the sportiest performance while high performance won't be on the minds of every Ford Focus Estate buyer. The sporty ST models deliver a degree of speed that will embarrass many a hot hatchback. Economical diesel range diesels remain popular in estates of this size, with Ford offering a number to suit various needs. The range kicks off with the 1.5-litre DC and 95-horsepower guys. It doesn't look particularly gutsy on paper but its 250 Nm of torque outstrips all of the mainstream petrol engine figures, requiring infrequent changes to the standard 6-speed manual gearbox. Top speed is 112 miles per hour but it'll reach 62 miles per hour from a standing start in 12.2 seconds. Up next is an Econetic 105 horsepower version of the same unit, it reaches 116 miles per hour and covers the 0 to 62 miles per hour benchmark in 12.1 seconds, but its main appeal is that this is the most efficient model in the estate range, claimed economy is an impressive 83.1 miles per gallon with CO2 emissions of just 88 grams slash km. Topping the 1.5-litre diesels is the 120-horsepower edition, producing 270 Nm of torque. Here there's a choice of the standard manual transmission or the optional twin-clutch 6-speed power shift automatic. Performance is quoted at 120 miles per hour and 10.7 seconds for the 0 to 62 miles per hour for the manual. 119 miles per hour and 11 seconds when the automatic is specified. The same two gearboxes feature with the 2.0 litre DC with 150 horsepower, the engine's increased size pushing torque up to 370 newton meters. It performs well, Ford citing a top speed of 130 miles per hour for the manual form and 129 miles per hour for the power shift. Honors are reversed for the 0 to 62 miles per hour sprints with the manual requiring a tenth of a second longer than the automatic's 8.9 second time. Broad selection of petrol power plants Ford's EcoBoost turbocharged engines come in 1.0 and 1.5 litre capacities in the mainstream range. First up is the 3 cylinder 1.0T EcoBoost in 100 horsepower guys, fitted with the 5 speed manual gearbox. It's the slowest accelerating in the range with a 0 to 62 miles per hour time of 12.7 seconds, coertest of just 170 newton meters of torque. Top speed is 115 miles per hour more suited to the estate is the 125 horsepower version of the 1.0T EcoBoost. Not only is torque increased to 200 newton meters, the standard gearbox is a 6-speed manual. An automatic with the same number of ratios is optionally available. Stick with the manual for a 120 miles per hour top speed and a 0 to 62 miles per hour claim of 11.2 seconds. The automatic adds a second to that and shaves 1 mile per hour from the top speed. For the 4 cylinder 1.5T EcoBoost motors, gearbox choices are manual and power shift dual clutch automatics, both with 6 speeds. Producing 150 horsepower and 240 newton meters of torque. The manual will reach 130 miles per hour and has a top speed of 9.1 seconds. The power shift 129 miles per hour and 9.4 seconds. Above those two are the 182 horsepower versions of the 1.5T EcoBoost, again with manual and power shift gearboxes, although they still produce the same amount of torque. The results are top speeds of 138 miles per hour for the manual. 137 miles per hour for the power shift AMD 8.8 second 0 to 62 miles per hour times for both. 
Wrapping up the non-sporty range is the 105 horsepower 1.6 liter TVCT unit, without a turbo. A 5-speed manual is standard fare here. It's the least torquey in the range, and the least appealing, too. Top speed is 116 miles per hour, with a 0 to 62 miles per hour time of 12.5 seconds. Faster SD estates deliver thrills enthusiastic drivers keeping a close eye on running costs need to pay attention to the STs fitted with the 185 horsepower version of the 2.0 litre T diesels. Both the standard 6-speed manual and optional power shift automatic with the same number of gears have 400 newton meters of torque on tap. Both will reach 135 miles per hour all out, but at 7.8 seconds it's the automatic that's quicker from a standstill to 62 miles per hour, half a second better than the manual. Purists will be more attracted to the 2.0T EcoBoost version and its feistier 250 horsepower and 360 newton meters of torque output. Here are 6-speed manuals the sole transmission, but it's a slick box that engages you with the driving experience fully. The motor sounds purposefully intoxicating as you scorch from 0 to 62 miles per hour in just 6.7 seconds, all the way to a top speed of 154 miles per hour. Less steering feel than earlier focuses handling remains a strong point overall SD goes beyond that delivering plenty of fun as far as handling is concerned the focuses state is, like the hatch, competent. Ford, in a bid to appeal to an even broader market than before, has made this iteration just a little softer. In tighter corners you get a little more body lean, a tad less grip and steering that just isn't as quick or sharp as that on the old model. Still, it's not bad relative to its rivals, and if you do enter bends with gusto, a slight lift of the accelerator will put you back online. Of course, this is an estate so handling ability is not the priority. But it still gives the newer Volkswagen Golf Estate a run for its money, as well as just about seeing off the Vauxhall Sports Tourer. It is hard to be too critical of the Focus Estate, it does feel less of a driver's car this time around, but the compromises made to deliver a more comfortable ride are worth it. The main gripe lies with the steering because there's not as much feedback coming through the wheel anymore. The rest of the controls combined to give a positive driving experience, the brakes are excellent and the gear change on the manual is smooth. Lively SD Estate that steering grievance is still present in the rubbery setup in the SD Estate, but overall there's little else to complain about with the performance-oriented version. It might be lacking in communication, but the steering's well-weighted and responsive, with excellent road holding, but the stiffer suspension makes it feel that bit more lovely. On winding roads the ST shines, with impressive body control and reined-in body roll. The onboard electronics help reduce the chances of you looking an idiot behind the wheel with systems such as torque vectoring at your disposal. It gently breaks the inside wheels in corners, enabling you to keep a tighter line albeit at higher speeds. Cabin overhaul is part of the 2014 facelift uplift in quality with reduced switch gear ST models barely feel different to lesser focuses a quick survey of the Ford Focus estate interior highlights a huge number of buttons and switches, with many housed on the steering wheel. This is an improvement over how things were, however as the amount of switch gear was reduced as part of the 2014 facelift. This was when the 8.0-inch touchscreen debuted, upgraded from Sync 2 to Sync 3 at the start of 2017. It's a step in the right direction but it lacks the Golf's and Astra's elegance. But either's not more than heavily bolstered seats, some obliquely angled ancillary instruments on top of the dash and a liberal sprinkling of ST logos to differentiate the sportier model's cabins. That trio of extra dials displays oil temperature, turbo boost and oil pressure, but are too small to interpret their readouts quickly. One of the most comfortable estates, no adaptive suspension option, though a little sign of harshness with the sportier ST there isn't much that gives reason to complain about regarding the comfort on offer in the Ford Focus estate, with plenty of support and adjustment in the front seats, although the rear ones are less well shaped and make you feel like you're sat more upright. Ride quality really impressed us. This is one of the most compliant estates in this segment riding on conventional metal sprung suspension. Newer, adaptive systems, such as those in the Golf Estate, have the edge, though. While engine and road noise are well suppressed, you can hear wind rushing around the square edge door mirrors. No double glazing or noise cancelling speakers like on the larger Fords here. Sport your SD remains comfortable you'd be forgiven for expecting the SD Estate to be very firm, yet it remains impressively supple even across broken surfaces. 
only along really poor asphalt and ironworks at low speeds does it jostle about. You could easily use it for daily family activities without it feeling compromised. Its sports seats hold you reassuringly when cornering and while most will get along just fine with them, those on the broader side may find they squeeze a bit too much over longer journeys. 7 trim levels for the estate variety of models to suit different needs ST models have a sporty mandate there have been a trim level realignment over the years but for 2017 the focus estate range consists of a hierarchy similar to the hatchbacks, style, Zaytec edition, titanium, titanium X, SD line, ST2 and ST3. Standard Ford Focus Estate Equipment Entry Point to the Estate Range is the style specification, which is reasonably well equipped given its modest starting price. No alloy wheels here, it runs on on 16-inch steel eyes with full-width trims, but it does come with electric front windows and door mirrors, remote central locking, aircon, DAB radio and Bluetooth connectivity. You get significantly more with the Zaytec Edition, which represents the most popular choice in the range. It no longer has the sporty air previously associated with this specification, with more chrome than gloss back exterior trim. Outside you'll find 16-inch alloys, an electrically heated windscreen, rear privacy glass and door mirrors with integral indicators. Dominating the dashboard is an 8.0-inch touchscreen for the SYNC 3 multimedia system. If you're looking for a touch of luxury then consider the titanium. It embellishes the Zaytec Editions kit with a different design of alloy wheel automatic lights and wipers, rear parking sensors, keyless entry and start, dual zone climate control and active city stop emergency braking. Spend extra on the Titanium Max and there's even more equipment on the roster. The alloys are increased to 17 inches, plus there's a reversing camera, self-parking function, by xenon headlights and electrically folding door mirrors. Inside there are heated front seats, part leather upholstery and multicolored LED lighting. SD line was introduced to replace the previous Zaytec S in 2016, complete with a sporty look comprising of 17-inch alloys with a grey finish, a body kit, LED day running lights and sports suspension. The interior also had a refresh with sports style pedals, steering wheel and knob. The three subgrades of ST were reduced to two in 2017 after the ST1 was discontinued. There's a lot of standard kit on the ST2, 18-inch alloy, a racy ST specific body kit, keyless start, dual zone climate control, Recaro front seats with part leather upholstery and the SYNC 3 multimedia system with DAB radio and Bluetooth connectivity. Sitting atop the Focus Estate range is the ST3, which adds by Xenon headlamps, heated seats with full leather upholstery, a three-person Recaro rear seat, cruise control, grey painted alloys with red brake calipers visible through them, keyless entry and illuminated scuff plates. Optional Ford Focus Estate Accessories There is an enormous range of extra cost options to choose from to personalize your Focus Estate, from simple additions like metallic paint and alloy wheels, to useful features such as rear privacy glass, door edge protectors and adaptive cruise control. Representing better value are the option packs where various extras are bundled together, although the prices vary depending on which trim level is your starting point. The convenience pack is popular with focus buyers and includes a self-parking function, front and rear parking sensors, electrically folding door mirrors and one-touch electric windows that raises and lowers them in one go. If you don't want to go the whole hog then city pack, limited to just the rear parking sensors and power folding door mirrors, may appeal. Go for the driver assistance pack for the active city stop autonomous emergency braking, lane keeping aid to warn you when you're drifting out of the white lines road sign recognition and automatic main beam for the headlights. 5-star rating from Euro and Cap Lower Insurance Premiums Active City Stop Spend Extra on the Driver Assistance Pack Safety is at the forefront of many family car buyers' minds, so it's reassuring that the Ford Focus Estate scored the full 5 stars when crash tested by the experts at Euro and Cap. There's a raft of crash prevention kit fitted including all-round airbags, electronic stability control and isofix child seat mounting points. For extra cash you can also specify the driver assistance pack comprising of blind spot monitors, lane keeping assist to steer you gently between the white lines and automatic main beams for the headlamps. You may also find your insurance premiums are reduced by opting for the autonomous emergency braking system, active city stop, which takes over the braking effort if its sensors detect the driver's not doing so quick enough. Boot space is reasonable, 
not class leading cabin isn't the most spacious storage protectors invaluable practicality is increased over the hatchback courtesy of the Ford Focus Estates 20 cm extra length at the back. With the rear seats up there's 476 litres of space, increasing to 490 litres if you substitute the spare wheel for a tyre repair kit. Fold the 60 hours 40 minutes split rear seats over, they don't fold completely flat, annoyingly and the total capacity increases to 1,502 litres, or 1,516 litres without the spare wheel. For passengers the Focus's extra width has liberated a little more should room making it feel less claustrophobic than its predecessor. The estate's more horizontal roof makes it feel more spacious in the back compared with the hatch, too. A novel, but optional, feature are the door edge protectors. They pop out and wrap around the outer edge of the doors providing a rubber strip to protect your paint. If you have kids and a narrow garage they'll prove beneficial.